Where do I fit in? We've got uh, about 30 minutes to look at two lessons. There's a place for everyone in the body of Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31, here is the implications. Now what we're going to do is just kind of look at some statements from some of these verses. It'd be good to read the whole thing, but just kind of for lack of time, we're not going to just take the time and read those whole uh, nine verses. But you find some of them here in these next sections. A, for the body does not consist of one member, but many. And what does, what's the implications? What do we learn from this? Pardon? All parts are important and make up that complete one body. Very good. And to say one body is to, once again, I think to emphasize the unity that it ought to have, although there's many members. And he uses this metaphor of body, and, and you know, just think of your body. One body, but, you know, one of the songs the kids sing, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. If you've got a kiddo around the house, you've heard it on these YouTube channels, etc. Many parts, one body. Now B, if the foot should say, this is getting now of good parts. In fact, this section to me is, I think it's one of the most important sections in the Bible to emphasize how every part's important and should be therefore viewed as important. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. What's the implications here? What's the implications? Okay, by mentioning hand and foot, different parts, they are important, have a function. And I think that's kind of, and that is, is to be brought out in several of these verses. What about this idea of, I'm not a part of the body? What is that? Where would it come from? Why would somebody say that? If that little foot got diseased and is not a part of the body, there's no hand to fix it. Good thing to bring out. Is it part of the body? Yes. You know, maybe it's, I don't want to be. I don't like this body. It's still a part of the body. We need to be thinking about the church, he's writing to the local church at Corinth. And I think that this is best understood in the context of the local body. Yes, you are, even if you think, I don't want to be. See, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? What's the implications here? The functions, each part has a function. And, and like I say, that's implied in a number of these verses, but really so here, as much as anything else. And so, to, okay, to keep this in mind, we're talking about where do I fit in. So the implication here, you're a member of the body, that means you do have a function. And you are important. And other parts, a different function, you don't necessarily have the same function. So that's how important you are and needed. Every member of the body should feel important and needed. Now D, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. What are the implications here? Teamwork. 
Teamwork, okay. The need for each member and each function. What else do you think of when you read this? It takes all parts to be a whole. Takes all parts to be a whole? Anything else that just comes to mind when you read this? Emphasis again on our need for one another. Let me just make mention of this. That's sad words. Similarly, but you know, it's the it's the synonym, the opposite, if you would, kind of of the B. The foot says the hand, I don't need you. D is I cannot say the hand. I have no need of you. It's kind of like I don't want you in my body. I don't like you. You have no place here. It's, that is indicative of very bad and sad attitude and one of which we should never have. Way back when, and this goes back a year or more ago, we were studying of first and second Corinthians as the youth kind of had first second Corinthians for Bible bowl material. And when I preached this, you know, I said basically it's kind of this way. As you read through this, and as you get over to First Corinthians thirteen, this next chapter on love, you think in terms of if you could, the person in the body of Christ that is most troubling you have a harder time with, maybe even clash with, then take all this to heart and you realize, hey, I need that person. The church needs that person. And we should value that person. Okay, E, E. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those Parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. 1 Corinthians 12, 22-24. Okay, what's implied here? They're all important in God's sight. For, therefore, all important in our sight. Well, you have, you have the uh, feelings going both ways because you have like the, the foot feels like it's less than the hand, but the eye feels like it's greater than the hand. So there's, there's, you know, there's, there's some people that are just shy, Okay, treating everybody the same and uh, making sure everybody knows they're important. I would, I would go further, though, and suggest here, it's almost like some need more special attention. And, and to this, I would say, we need to be careful of the attitude, you're too much trouble. Well, 
Brother Don Brandon, he used an expression I hadn't heard in a long time, sad sack. Don't get a sad sack attitude about ourselves or either somebody else. Now if, on the back page, uh, would you conclude that there's a place for every Christian in the body of Christ? And this is kind of like, yeah, everybody do this away. And G, in the context of 1 Corinthians 12, miraculous spiritual gifts are being considered. Could the same application be made to the fact that members have different talents and abilities? Do you think you could make some of those applications to that? I, I see this. I, I agree. Um, no, we are not now having miraculous spiritual gifts, but different talents and abilities. The same kinds of things could occur. Attitudes, expressions of those attitudes. Having different talents and abilities, just like people who had different miraculous gifts. Two, is there a difference is there a difference in belonging to a congregation and fitting in a local congregation? Is there a difference? I get a yes. What's the difference? Okay, Stan said belonging is like hooking onto a horse and riding down the road beside it, and fitting in is like getting on the horse and riding it down the road. <laughs> good analogy, good analogy. And Dixie, it's a matter of our determining. Are we just going to be on the roll? Or are we going to be actively involved? Three, consider the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And you're familiar with that. We don't have time to go and read it. Talents were a measure of money. But how could the lessons of this parable, parable of the talents, be applied to using our talents and abilities in the local congregation? What are some things that are brought out in that parable have direct correlation on our using our talents and abilities in local church pardon bloom where you're planted okay what else Different abilities, but each one has a place. What else? Talents, abilities, and possessions would be part of all of that. Okay. What else? What did the five-talent man, two-talent man do that the one-talent man did not do? He worked or he used his talents. Five talent man then had 10 when the master returned. Two talent man had four when the master returned. One talent man, he had buried his. He still had it, but he'd not used it. Was God pleased with the five talent man? Was he pleased with the two talent man? Was he pleased with the one talent man? No. He took it away from them. You know, there's this old kind of phrase, use it or lose it, and I think you can say, well, it applies in this case. Didn't use it, and he lost it. I think you bring out something that's good. It's, it, the application is broader than just using talents in the local congregation. 
but certainly that would be part of the application. And that's kind of as we're using with this lesson here. Um, what, um, number four, what implications would 1 Corinthians 4, 2 have for you and your talents? 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, more of it is required of stewards that they would be found faithful, okay? You're steward of your talent, so you need to be faithful with your use of those talents. Number five, can any talent be used in God's service? Yes or no? What? I get a, I get a no. I get a no. <laughs> okay. Okay, tell me a limitation on a talent and how it's, and its use. I hadn't, I, I, I had not heard about a return check. Interesting. Once again, what would be a limitation on our talents with regards to our use of them? Pardon? Okay, all, all just selfish use, okay. Okay, you could be an expert safe cracker. That's your talent. Maybe if nobody could find the combination and use it. <laughs> okay, let's just, you know, we have over here a good musician, um, Alan Kay, some other good musicians, I'm sure, in the audience here. He plays a good... Uh, the guitar, and uh, he plays around with other stringed instruments. But uh, would there be any place for him to bring his guitar to worship? No, because of the authorization of God about music and its singing. So he's, there's a talent, but as far as within worship, there'd certainly be that limitation. David? And those two things you mentioned, I think they fit well, real well, number seven. Um, it's kind of like, how do you, we're doing good to finish one lesson, much less two tonight, but number six, what are some of the talents and abilities? What are your talents and abilities and how might they be used in God's service in the local congregation? Now, obviously, this is more of a thoughtful and reflective each person, I hope, would ask himself, you know, what talents, what abilities, what can I do and how can I use these? And I hope that you'd be honest with yourself about it. Now, number seven, what are some reasons members choose not to involve themselves and not to use their talents in a local congregation? What are some reasons? Tim says selfishness. What's some other answers?
Okay, one of the things I put down here, fact number one, was not asked. In other words, somebody else needed to be asked to lead singing in that case. And yes, I've been in that situation as well, where basically one or two song leaders, and it's sometimes you even got there and you wondered, do we have a song leader uh, years ago? Um, I Kind of for time, I put down busy with life. Sometimes it's like, I'm just too busy. And... Uh, with regards to work, family, and quite often a big part of that, even recreation. And so it's kind of like how I use my talents for God. It's kind of set aside. One thing kind of going with what David said, I put down no confidence. The person just kind of thinks, I can't do that. And low self-esteem, no confidence. And so he thinks he can't do it, so he doesn't do it, doesn't try. Another thing is hurt feelings, you know. That's a reality. We're all emotional people. God made us that way. So we have hurt feelings and we kind of, no. You, you ever heard this before? Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me. I got that wrong. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. You could say, burn me once. Shame on you. Burn me twice. Shame on me. You know, and, but hurt and kind of take a step backward. That happens. I put down here depressed with life. You know, sometimes people just go through difficult times and, 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 and they just feel low. And so that kind of transfers over to their service. They just, they're just not wanting to because of the way they're feeling. I put down here no commitment to God. It's just literally my commitment to God doesn't extend to using my talents for God. I put down here no love for the church because Ultimately, what we've been talking about here is using our talents in the local congregation. If I love you, my brethren, I need to be using my talents and abilities that God's given. Number eight, by the way, you got anything to add to those things I mentioned? Did I? That's a good point. Uh, we've been talking about talents and ability. Some things don't really take much talent. It just takes a willingness to do it. I've heard people put it this way. It's not ability, it's willability. Being willing to do it. And that's so true with a lot of things. Number eight, what are some things the local congregation needs to do to encourage the members to use the talents in the local congregation? Tim? Speak. Speak to the person, okay? In this case, I think you'd be uh, everything from leaders down to their close friends who recognize and know what they can do, okay? What else would you suggest? Okay, familiarity with scriptures, okay. What else? Okay, ask somebody to help. And it may even be you don't necessarily need the help. But there's a situation where this is important. For instance, sometimes it's a matter of then there's a mentoring situation. Or maybe in a classroom situation. Maybe the teacher's got it handled. But okay, who's going to be the next teacher? You know? So they get a helper. So they, they're learning to teach as they're with that experienced teacher. So uh, in other words, sometimes just ask, ask. And of course I would say this too. Use, use the people who volunteer. Um, in other words, if they've said I will, well... You know, use them. Next lesson. We got five minutes for this lesson. Um, this one, it gets more specific. Fitting in at Eastern Meadows, and the two primary areas looking at fitting in was fellowship and involvement. 
And kind of the purpose of this is look at a little bit the ideas of fellowship and involvement, then in a little more specific way, ways that there is fellowship at Easter Meadows and involvement at Easter Meadows. And kind of real quickly, what are some purposes of fellowship? What are some purposes of fellowship? Encourage each other. That's very important. It engenders love. You know, it helps us to know each other. It's hard for us to know and express that love if we don't know each other. It's kind of like in, in fellowship, it's connecting with one another. In other words, fellowship can also carry the idea of sharing and, uh, and, and joint participation. And so it may even be this word fellowship can be used in not just a, okay, we use it to we're going to eat together almost. It is a deeper meaning than that. Like I say, joint participation, sharing. So, in other words, it's sharing in the Lord's kingdom. I've gotten here to discuss Acts 2, 42 to 47 with its implications for fellowship. Uh, we don't have time to talk about it, but they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, prayers, etc. And we see a commitment to one another as they met even on a daily basis. See, why is fellowship essential? Somebody even brought it out, Michael did, about this encouragement. It says exhort one another. In other words, in the purposes, so you don't fall away and you hold confidence firm to the end. Fellowship, that is us with each other, encouraging one another can help provide that. Number two, communication is essential element of fellowship. Uh, what should not come out of your mouth, Ephesians 4.29, Corrupting talk, what should come out of your mouth, good that builds up. Um, number three, fellowship opportunities. Now we got five minutes to finish the rest of the lesson. Um, some fellowship opportunities that we have here at Easter Meadows. I would say the assemblies. Now, that's because we're sharing and there's joint participation. It may not fit that general usual word sometimes of fellowship because we do think of eating. But I would say, yes, assemblies. Number two, let's get to the eating part. Team fellowship meals. Um, we have three teams this year, and each are meeting once a month. And then we have uh, then congregational fellowship meals every first Sunday of the month. So here's opportunities for uh, groups and the entire congregation to come together and eat. And I would encourage you, Use that time. I know we like to sit with our family. Let's branch out sometimes. Um, look for that person that just looks like they just want to sit by themselves. Don't let them. Sit with them. Um, fellowship. Not just you eat over there and I eat over here. Number four, Monday night motivation. That's time where we have a meal and then we have a class together. Five, men's prayer breakfast. There's a few of those. Many, number six, ladies activities. Many, many, many of those. And number seven, any other occasion that brings saints together. Work days, prayer time, etc. But all of these would be opportunities for fellowship. And the opportunities for involvement. And when I was doing this last year, uh, the latest involvement sheet I had access to for Easter Meadows, the 2018 Opportunities for Involvement. It was revamped and the 2019 was very different in its format, though in a great way there's a lot of similarities, just very different format. But some of these opportunities for involvement, uh, Bible study, of course, these are actual occasions of Bible study. It is an opportunity for involvement. The Bible classes, Sunday, Wednesday, Monday night motivation, each man has a ladies retreat, ladies day, uh, planning, a time to pray, area-wide ladies devotional, children's educational department, VBS, all of these things. And uh, we would, could say here, uh, though it's kind of elsewhere as well, there's opportunities for teachers in these things. Outreach, there's the various kinds of things that are done and that were on that involvement sheet in 2018. Service, um, and here's a number of areas of service, and that was ladies. You get over to page 35, 
And here's uh, some kind of dealing a little bit more with men and uh, various, you say various things listed under there and you get over to page 36 and it gets a lot more specific as far as things men would participate with in the public uh, aspect of worship, teaching and evangelizing those, uh, whether it's teaching class or helping with lads to leaders or helping with World Bible School. And then there's the encouragement and fellowship with regards to uh, serving as a team group or group leader. And uh, then areas of service from benevolence to baptistry maintenance. And then there's just talent someone might have from electrical down to vehicle maintenance that, in other words, some member may have a need and it may be then a member could help with that need versus they are having to then maybe hire someone to do it, especially someone who uh, can't really afford it, or maybe it's a small job, and you know somebody could do a small job for them. Whereas, you know, they call uh, uh, a handyman, and he wants a big price. So, all of these are just kind of various ways for fellowship and involvement at Eastern Meadows. I hope, I really do hope, that we understand how important every member is and that means you say unto yourself I am important and you say unto yourself he she is important and that you say to yourself I know there's something that I can do I know that God's blessed me in some way with some talent ability some way I can function let me find it let me determine it and let me use it and oh, by the way, he, she has a talent, ability, a function, and it's important that they use it. Let me encourage them to use it. And let us then be involved in the ways that we can here at Easter Meadows. And that's bell number two. Next week, uh, we looked in at the next lesson, then we finish up. There's uh, two more two more weeks of lessons.